Starting again with the second set of notes from section 2.5, let's take a look at our first proof example. For our first example, we're given that angle CAD is congruent to angle BAE. So let's make sure we put our tick marks in our diagram. That's the most important thing. We want to prove that angle CAE is congruent to angle BAD. Well, similar to the chart example we saw on the last page, we notice we have that angle DAE that, that are in between those two other angles. Now, we can't make the angles that we already have congruent any smaller than they are. But we can make them larger if we add on that yellow angle that's in between both of them. So if we add on the yellow angle to angle CAD, we end up with angle CAE. And if we add on the yellow angle to angle BAE, then we end up with angle BAD. And therefore, since the smaller angles were congruent, and then we're adding on the same angle to the already congruent angles, we can say that those larger angles CAE and BAD are congruent by the addition property. Now let's put into words specifically what it means. You do not have to do this. You can just say addition property. But to clarify, what we did was we took the same angle, which is the one highlighted in yellow, angle DAE, and we added it to already congruent smaller angles. So if we add the same angle to congruent angles, then their sums are congruent. Now let's take a look at the second example. So for the second example, we're given that segment PT is congruent to segment SQ. So those larger segments are congruent. And if we notice, once again, we have that overlapping occurring. Okay, so let's go ahead and write in what we have so far. So we know that segment PT is congruent to segment SQ. How do we know that? Because it's given. And let's see where we can go next. Well, we want to get PS congruent to TQ. Well, right away I'd be thinking, once again, that overlapping is happening. So we know that we cannot make those segments any larger than they already are, but we can remove that smaller segment that they share, segment ST. So if we subtract off that red segment ST, from the two larger segments, then we result in two smaller congruent segments that are congruent. That's our result. So this is the subtraction property since we started off with two larger segments and we ended up with two smaller congruent segments. Once again, you do not have to write this, but let's just put into words what happened. So this time we subtracted the same segment, that red one, from the already congruent larger segments. So if you subtract the same segment from congruent segments, then that means that their differences are congruent. Now we did a couple of examples where subtracting the same segment from congruent segments and same angle from congruent angles, but keep in mind you can also subtract off congruent segments from congruent segments and congruent angles from congruent angles. The proofs will get a little bit more detailed, but if you would like to refer to some further examples, you can look in your book, section 2.5, at the book examples there.